Hello everyone. Um, so I decided to use my control box that uh, you saw in the previous videos uh, is used to actuate the snowblower for the winter. Uh, up and down, left and right, and shoot direction uh, tilt as well. So that uh, control box uh, can control up to three loads. So I decided that in the summertime I will also have a plow that I can use in the front of the tractor as you saw from the other video as well. Uh, that will connect to one of these switches. Uh, I also have a, um, a greater plow that goes in the back of the tractor. Uh, I will also get a linear actuator connected on that and again control it from one of these switches as well. Not at the same time, those plows are not going to be there all summer long, only when I'm doing, uh, when I'm moving dirt around in the yard. But uh, the cool thing is I decided to motorize the uh, mowing deck. So you guys are all too familiar with this uh, ugly uh, lever here, and that it's, uh, of course, way too hard to lift. So I took this off. Okay. Unfortunately, it has this uh, big bushing that's uh, part of the lever, so I managed to find this one for now, which I had in my pile of uh, hardware, that uh, does a decent job. There is some slop in it, but until I find uh, a replacement, uh, this will do. I'll put some washers here and of course put the, the bolt back to make sure that uh, it stays in place. So that lever, if you go underneath, um, is connected to this bar right here, okay? And in turn, on that bar, there is this bracket. This is all part of the standard uh, equipment here. And as you can see, there are those two holes at the very end, right here. Uh, and that bracket is not used for anything. It just seems to be hanging there. So, um, see if I can show you. This goes down. So to lift it up, actually, the lever uh, pushes it down like this and the moving deck goes up. So now you can see the bars are up. So what my plan is to hook up a linear actuator on this side, right on this hole right here. And back there on that hole right there which is close to the cooling fan of the transmission. However, I took the uh, six inch linear actuator that I use on the snow blower off the blower and that's what I'm gonna use to uh, see if this works. And if it does, I will likely buy another linear actuator because it's a pain to get under here, uh, you know, to switch between the blower and the mowing deck every year. So uh, they're not cheap, so I will see what's in the budget, but um, I'm going to use the 6 inch 500 pound linear actuator that's on the blower. So that's the plan. Okay, so here is the first proof of concept implementation. Again, a bolt back there in that open hole that was there. And on this side, tied to that uh, lever, as I said. With a bolt that, uh, again, this is also not the right bolt. I need something a little longer that's going to allow me to have um, a counter nut on both sides. So I uh, connected it and uh, it works. I can't show it to you right now because I don't have the uh, wiring permanently in place yet. This is uh, just temporary right here, but uh, it works. I did connect the uh, moving deck and it does lift it up a little slow and it does obviously drop it down actually a little too fast. So what I'm thinking of doing is using um, one of these uh, springs uh, like the ones that come with the snowblower to help uh, kind of keep it uh, uh, the tension on the upside and I'm thinking of putting a spring um, somewhere on this cam maybe on this uh, lever right here, uh, which is the other side that holds, that, that pull the other, the other bracket uh, of the bowing deck so that it goes up evenly. And so I'm thinking I'm gonna stretch a spring between that lever and uh, somewhere a point of hook right there. And um, 
hopefully that will uh, kind of alleviate the uh, the force a little bit going up and so the next step is to get some uh, longer permanent bolts um, let me show you the back what it looks like so again just uh, very simple all I had to do is add a bolt over there a bolt on the, the bracket and it was up and running uh, I just need better better bolts so off to the store okay guys a quick update I got uh, the new hardware so just to show you how um, the uh, linear actuator is going to be held in place so I've got a carriage bolt um, sitting down there bolted to the uh, sidewall of the frame sticking out it's a four inch uh, long half inch uh, carriage bolt um, and basically these um, these two nuts here are going to be used as um, um, to center the uh, actuator where it needs to be and the, uh, it's going to go in between the two washers and then on this side as well same thing however on this side you'll notice that I decided to extend the original bracket here so these holes were already there um, but I decided to add um, a, another bracket here because I really wanted to be able to use a, uh, a thicker a half inch bolt uh, this hole isn't big enough and to enlarge this hole in this little cavity back under here it's uh, very hard I, I didn't think I could get a file in there or I, I thought of a Dremel but it's just too much work so I also um, decided to do this because clearly by having a longer leverage a lever it's gonna make the um, uh, the lifting action um, easier for the linear actuator again when I uh, tried it uh, experimented with it earlier on I found that uh, it was a little slow coming up. It, the linear actuator can do it no problem. Uh, it, it does that for the uh, snow blower. Um, but I figured uh, making it a little longer would just make it a little easier. And this way it would allow me to create this bracket on the vise, on the bench, and put whatever holes I needed to put into it very easily. So as you can see, it um, comes down nicely. It stops here where it, was, where it was stopping before. So everything lines up. It's gonna give me maximum travel. And my hope, however, is that now that this is a little longer, the hope is that when the actuator is in place, when it goes down here, obviously the actuator is going to tilt down this way more. And so my hope is that it doesn't hit the, uh, the fan over here. Uh, when I enlarge this hole for this uh, half-inch carriage bolt, I enlarge this so that I would go up a little bit. Essentially, I moved the hole up instead of just making it larger the way, where it was. So my hope is that between moving this up, you know, a hair and moving this down, it's not going to hit the, uh, the fan over here on the uh, transmission. So next step is to mount the actuator and make sure that the uh, travels freely and then off to uh, do wiring. Okay, so the uh, linear actuator is installed, uh, bolted down, it came out nice and straight. Just to give you a view down here. I cannot reach the switch up at the top, so I cannot show you how it moves. Um, I have done some wiring as well. So that is a wire that's temporarily hanging over there. And this is where it taps into. Uh, if you watch my other video on the snowblower, um, power lift and shoot direction and tilt you will know that uh, I have done some um, relay work in order to connect the uh, controls that, you, that I have here to the, uh, to, the, to the three loads which are linear actuator for up and down um, windshield wiper motor for uh, direction of the chute and then again actuator for up and down of the chute uh, tilt so I am picking up on the top one here and uh, so now I can actuate it um, either up or down and uh, these are the relays that uh, control the, um, the load which in this case is the linear actuator which is now going to be for the um, mowing deck. 
So just a little preview and uh, the next time this will be all buttoned up into, I'm going to put this uh, into a box. Of course I've got to uh, insulate these uh, connections right here. And then this is my power takeoff essentially um, for the, to control the loads, um, to control the, the loads that these relays control. Okay, so I did a little more wiring and uh, cleaning up as well of the wiring that I had done uh, this past fall to, uh, for the first implementation of the um, snowblower. So as you um, know from the schematic, this is the portion of relays that um, uh, does the, uh, that controls the, uh, uh, the push buttons over here and protects the push button from the Swiss from the uh, hard switch to make sure that uh, they're both not on at the same time, reversing my polarity and shorting my battery. So this goes under the dash, and then as you know, there is a portion of relays that goes uh, close to the loads. Uh, in this case, the uh, linear actuators and the uh, windshield wiper motor for the snowblower chute. So <clears throat> since that portion, since one of the uh, uh, a set of relays goes with the snowblower and it's permanently attached to the snowblower, in order for me to use those switches, uh, that control panel right there, I had to build another set of, uh, of controls. Uh, so this one is going to go uh, with the tractor this time. It's going to stay with the tractor. And uh, in this case, uh, for the um, uh, mowing deck, uh, lift, it's uh, pretty close to the load. It's just going to have a wire that's about uh, a couple of feet long, um, and I think that will be fine. Uh, but I figured that since I was at it, I would also add the controls for the other two switches. That way, I can also have uh, a front plow and a and a, a greater plow in the back uh, with two separate linear actuators if I wanted to occasionally uh, in the summertime. So this is all the wiring, uh, it's all finished, it's all tested, uh, everything works, each uh, uh, set of relays uh, controls, uh, like I said, each load, and I tested each one, these are my outputs. Um, so now I'm going to button that all up, and what I did is I bought one of these uh, $6 um, ammo boxes at um, a Harbor Freight, and my plan is to basically tuck it under here. Uh, really just loosely like this and put all this wiring inside as well as uh, this harness right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, make a hole right here and then make a, a cut on, on this um, uh, side right here where the hole will be here so that way all this wiring can just neatly go uh, over here and um, and then I'll make a bracket I will make a bracket that reconnects these um, this side over here so that I can still clamp it in place. Uh, so it's not going to be uh, watertight or anything like that, but it'll be uh, clean, um, uh, dust-free, uh, grass-free, and uh, obviously, you know, there's not going to be any water that's going to go in there. Uh, these are all uh, external um, outdoors type of relays. These are not really, but again, uh, I don't suspect that there's going to be any moisture built up in there. If I do happen to watch the tractor, uh, occasionally I do that. I will uh, try to keep uh, the water away from that box. And so, like I said, this box is going to live under here, uh, tucked under there, and um, it should be um, nice and clean. So I'm going to do that now, and I will show you the uh, end result. So just one quick uh, clarification, just so you know what I'm talking about here. This uh, group of relays over here is uh, these two relays. And so there is one per channel where one channel would be one load. As you can see, the switches. And again, just look at my other video that explains how this whole thing works and you'll understand. Let me get closer there. And then uh, the new hardness that I built right here uh, is basically these two relays. So there, is, there are again two relays per load. As you can see in this case, this would be the load right here. Uh, end of run switches, in this case, I 
just bridge them together. I am not going to use uh, end run switches, but uh, I put the connectors there. That way, if I in the future I wanted to run some switches, I can just run them, uh, put them in series with this guy, with these two connectors, two per channel, and I have my end of run switches. All right. Okay, so here is the final product. As you can see, I made a, uh, a nice hole in the box and with a little slit over here, show you a bracket that I made before cutting the box to keep it together and as you can see wires can go in and out of there easily and then everything is basically stuffed in here this tape over here is to protect wiring from uh, the tips of these uh, sheet metal screws that I used over there and basically everything is just tucked in here everything is nice and solid and soldered uh, together there are a bunch of connectors there that initially I was thinking needed to be there but uh, they are not uh, necessary nonetheless they're there now and they're gonna stay there so everything is tucked away protected this latches nicely if I need to get in the back there I can just do this kind of uh, quickly and I might secure this just so that it doesn't bounce around but really, realistically, it doesn't really matter. Um, these wires are going to be going over here to this box for the summer. And then in the winter time, they unplug and they go out to the snowblower up front. That's why they're, they're this long and they wrap around. So... Um, I found that uh, it's good to put these plastic uh, wrap on the wires because the uh, the heat uh, could um, uh, obviously if they come if they come in close contact with the muffler or things like that they'll definitely melt. But uh, even so, it's good to protect the wires from the from the heat that the engine generates. Um, so that's it. I'm just gonna wrap it up. I put some of this uh, inner tube over here. So to protect really the bulk of the water or moisture that might be going in here, that's, that's there. I put some duct tape on this edge. Uh, it'd be nice to have had uh, the rubber molding stuff that crimps on, but I don't have it. Someday maybe I'll find some somewhere. But this does the job just to, again, protect the wires from chafing against these uh, sharp edges. Um, so this is overall... Uh, these are some of the uh, wiring for the lights that comes from this box right here. Just to show you again, uh, that box does my display, which when you power on, it's used to um, do uh, uh, the clock, seconds, uh, reads my voltage off my battery, as well as uh, temperature. Okay, so this uh, eBay display that has those three functions. And then these are the switches that do lighting, uh, which um, basically auxiliary lighting, which is where these wires uh, end up. And one goes in the back for that light, LED light. And then one goes in the front uh, on my hood right now that uh, is right there. Uh, as I mentioned before, I am thinking of adding another one, maybe under here, but I have to see how, when the hood is on and my legs are over here, uh, you know, obviously it cannot interfere with that. And the purpose of the light, I might put it here as well. Purpose of the light is to illuminate the uh, mowing deck uh, when occasionally I end up uh, mowing in the late evenings, which often happens um, uh, more in the fall than during the summertime. Um, that's it. So I'm going to button it up. Put the uh, I'm going to clean up the mowing deck. Put that on, and um, I will show you the final product. Okay, final product. So it's all buttoned up together. <clears throat> mowing deck is on. Show you under the hood over here. All the wiring is in place. 
it is uh, fairly away from the engine there should be no melting of anything and that's the wiring for the added LED light this is the existing lighting that was there the two light bulbs I added some uh, cool looking dragon uh, glow, glow red glow lights under here just some old-fashioned uh, bulbs strip lighting and so everything is there this comes up and so here's my controls Goes up clutch engages when it's at the end of the run and it goes down See if you can show this better maximum height and lower I can still adjust the knob to the desired height which I usually run about four inches right there that's it so now it stops And all the way to the down position when I'm mowing the lawn. That's it, guys. I hope uh, this uh, was something that uh, you enjoyed watching. Uh, I enjoyed building it. It is as needed as the power windows in your car, which obviously you can use a crank to raise and lower. But uh, this was a cool, fun project, and uh, it makes use of my absolutely need controls for the snowblower but now i can use them for other functions in the summertime all right thank you for watching